Hi, my name is Mike, and we want to just praise God for walking through us uh, in our highs, in our lows, and that He never does abandon us. You know, uh, when I was younger, uh, I remember uh, walking my kids from school, and at that time, my oldest was going to a Christian school, and my uh, daughter was going to a different school. And as we were walking home, he was explaining to her that at the end of the week, there was a talent market. And what it was is that uh, throughout the week, if you did something good, if you did your homework, if you obeyed, or if you helped someone, you were given a talent, and you can collect those things, and at the end, you can buy something. And I was starting to get concerned that maybe he was going to tease his sister and say that uh, he got this and this. But to my surprise, he said that he got her something, and he gave her like a sticker. And then what even surprised me even more was that he gave me something um, as well. And it showed me that uh, he was willing to share the talents that he had received. And the passage that we're going to be looking at talks about the talents. And I know that in our human nature, it's to, to be, uh, to conserve or to keep it to ourselves. But we will see how we need to share because of what God has given to us it is meant to be given to others. Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey, who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, You wicked, lazy servant! So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers, so that when I returned I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has ten bags. For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So if you've been following along in the teachings and the readings that uh, we've been doing day by day, uh, you will see that Jesus has been talking about the return of Christ uh, since chapter 24. And he's telling his listeners that you need to be prepared. And this applies to us as well as we read the words of Christ. And earlier he gave the parable of the ten virgins. And in this he talks about uh, how important it is to be prepared um, as individuals. That uh, in terms of the return of Christ, 
It's not done as a, you know, a community. It's not done as a family. It's not done as a church. But it needs to be done individually. It's between you and God. And that we need to be ready for that day. And in order to be ready, it's not to be done passively, waiting for His return. But here He touches upon being responsible and producing results that the Master approves of. Uh, now, waiting is not intended to be you know, an empty, meaningless delay, but it's an opportunity for us to do good. Uh, so that's how we should approach the time between now and when Jesus returns. Now, Jesus is teaching his followers uh, another parable, and it's concerning talents. Uh, now, one thing to keep in mind that in this passage, the word for talent is not meant to be understood like we do in English. You know, when we think of talent, uh, we think of, you know, abilities or skills or power. Uh, but here in this context, the word is meant to be seen as a measure of weight. Uh, it's the amount that is being discussed here in this passage. Uh, and so Jesus is telling his followers, his listeners, that you need to be carrying out your responsibilities. Uh, so keep in mind some things about these talents that God has given to each of these servants. Uh, the talent that he's saying is that well, what he's given is not yours. You know, it's what God, own, God is the owner and he's lending it to us. So keep in mind that whatever your talents may be, it's not something that you own. It's not something that you created, but it was given to you by God. Like it says in verse 14, that as a master is going on his journey, he entrusts his servants, which are all of us, with his property, not our own property. Uh, the servant has no idea you know, how long the master will be away, how long he'll be gone for. All he's told is that you are to manage uh, the resources of, of your master. Take care of it until he returns. It's sort of important for us to remember, to be reminded that what we have belongs to God. It is not our own. Uh, and also we are given what we can handle. Uh, God knows exactly how we're made. Uh, God knows how much we can, uh, how much we can work with. And so the master gives, uh, that's why he gives each servant a different amount because he knows their abilities and what they're capable of doing. You know, that's comforting for me to know because sometimes I'll compare myself to other pastors or to other Christians and other people and I, and I will be jealous about their, you know, the, what they are able to do. But I'm here, I'm reminded that God knows what's best for me. And so he's given me the perfect amount because he knows exactly what I'm capable of doing. And then uh, God is also telling, Jesus is telling us in this passage that we need to invest what we've been given. And so this is another principle that we can apply from this passage. And so we see that uh, the, the servants were given different amounts. Uh, the servant was given five and three talents they immediately invest in what was given to them and they make a profit off of that talent. Uh, this is what God is asking from us today, that we, we are to use what God has given us to expand His kingdom and not just keep it to ourselves, but we are told to invest and to make it grow. Uh, and that's what our mentality is. That should be our approach. Or let's not be like this wicked servant who simply buried and wasted this talent that was given to him. Uh, another thing that we ought to keep in mind about these talents is that we will be held accountable. And in the end, when Christ returns, uh, we will be expected to give an answer for what was given to us. Uh, will you be making excuses or would you be proudly showing him uh, what you've done with, God, with what God has given to you? Uh, remember, the issue here is not how much you have, but how well you've used what has been given to you. Uh, we all know that Jesus will return. It's clear in the passage and when you read the Bible, uh, when Jesus returns, it will be quick and sudden. Uh, but this doesn't mean that we should quit our jobs in order to serve God. Uh, no, it means that we need to use our time, 
our talents, our treasures diligently and using it for God and for His glory uh, and not for ourselves. So let's not be like the last servant who played it safe, who tried to protect it uh, so that uh, he, won't have, he won't be um, uh, reprimanded by his master. So let's not make excuses or avoid what God has called us to do. Let's be caretakers of these talents that were given to us at this time. As we clearly see in this passage that we read today, uh, that God has given us talents, He's given us resources in our lives. And all of us have at least one talent, or whatever it might be. For some, it might be time in the season that you're in. Uh, for others, it might be the gift of teaching. For others, it might be the gift of generosity. Maybe you enjoy giving to people. Uh, whatever your God-given resources are, invest into it, use it, and have goals of how you're going to use it. Because we need to remember that it's not for us just to keep. It's not for us to say it's mine. It's for me to use. But God gave it to you so that you can be a blessing to other people, a blessing to your family, a blessing to your community, to, uh, to your church, and to this world. Uh, so let's be passionate about that, and let's be found faithful uh, in making sure that that talent increases in the kingdom of heaven and not here on earth. Uh, so let's learn from these examples of the wise servants and let's not be like that wicked one. Uh, so let's pray that that can be us, shall we? Uh, Father, we thank you for this example. We thank you, Lord, that you've given each and every one of us a talent. And I pray that we would use it wisely and I pray that it would grow and that it would develop and that it would help others to understand and see who our God is. Uh, thank you for this amazing time, and thank you, Lord, for uh, your love for us. And in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen.